It's a sign that Russian investors are shifting their money out of the ruble as economic sanctions against their country begin to take hold. Joining us to talk about it is Corey Clipston, Swan Bitcoin's CEO. Corey, thanks so much for being with us. Let's just start with how people are using crypto in, in Russia in particular, but also in Ukraine. How easy is it for Russians to bypass sanctions by using the cryptocurrency markets? Yeah, first, Alexis, thank you so much for having me on. And yeah, this has been uh, a topic at the top of everybody's mind uh, in my industry and, and obviously in the mainstream as well over the last week or so. And, uh, you know, essentially what is very, very difficult to do is for very large entities to move very large amounts of money through cryptocurrency, through Bitcoin, uh, without being detected. That is very, very difficult. What we do have here is a technology that's great for individual freedom, for the ability to escape physically, but keep your wealth with you, which has never before been possible in the history of, of conflict, essentially. So a lot of these exchanges, you know, are coming under such dramatic pressure to walk away from Russia. But doesn't that really defeat the purpose of crypto? Because isn't it supposed to be borderless and inclusive and decentralized? So, you know, it's sort of going against the grain by asking them to do that. What have these crypto exchanges um, been doing in reaction? Yeah, well, we have to remember there's a massive difference between the decentralized network of Bitcoin and centralized companies that facilitate trading and transfers for, for crypto and, you know, broadly. So these companies like Kraken or Binance or Swan.com, my own, my own company, we are subject to laws uh, where we uh, are domiciled and there are agencies that call us and ask us to do different things. You know, we, we focus very much on getting people to take self-custody, so buy the Bitcoin, take it off of the exchange, and, and essentially we don't have any control over that uh, from that point forward. And I think that's essentially the, the power here of Bitcoin is that you can take self-custody. I want to ask how you're seeing cryptocurrency being used in Ukraine in particular. I know they're using uh, Kuna, which is the uh, Ukrainian crypto exchange. They've been, they've been seeing a lot of activity. People, I guess, are using this as a way to donate to help the Ukrainian people. And, and are you also seeing that Ukraine's, because they've been cut off from a lot of their banks and the ability to access their money, are they using the crypto market? And if so, how? Yeah, I haven't actually seen a lot about the exchange volumes, but that doesn't surprise me one bit. Uh, the Russian exchanges <laughs> in, inside of Russia had also been very active. And in fact, Bitcoin was trading at a $20,000 premium uh, a couple of days ago, around 64, 65,000 versus uh, in the low to mid 40s uh, was kind of the global price. And yeah, as you note, I think one of the biggest stories here is the ability enabled by Bitcoin for Ukrainian entities to raise money globally with no third party in the middle simply by posting a tweet with a Bitcoin address. That has never happened before. And nothing on the scale of this, this level of fundraising uh, has happened. I was speaking with uh, a well-placed executive at one of the big uh, international NGOs yesterday, and he forecasts that if this conflict continues for any, any amount of time, we should see the amount donated topping hundreds of millions, maybe even a billion dollars over the next few months uh, being donated directly from citizens and, and small organizations around the world directly to Ukraine, which is just fascinating. And so crypto has been under such scrutiny even well before this conflict, right? So many calls for increased regulation to try and prevent money laundering and criminal activities. So do you think that they are under pressure uh, to appease regulators in a way by, you know, preventing transactions involving Russia? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think there's intense pressure. I think we saw uh, a letter go out from a group of senators, including uh, Sherrod Brown and Elizabeth Warren yesterday, uh, went to, uh, forgetting the name of the office, I think it was uh, OFAC, right, and Foreign Assets Control. And, um, you know, they're, they're trying to make sure that uh, the Treasury actually enforces uh, what they want done, which is actually freezing the assets of uh, individual Russians, Russian companies, Russian oligarchs, anyone around the Putin administration. So, you know, this is kind of a war on on all fronts. And in particular, right now, it's war on, on financial and economic fronts is kind of the, the levers that the West is pulling. And uh, yeah, they're going to do everything that they can. And these more global crypto exchanges like Binance and Kraken, 
that have had traditionally large numbers of Russian users. We, we actually don't serve users in Russia, Ukraine, or Belarus, although we do serve users in about 100 other countries. Uh, you know, they have very, very important and meaningful decisions to make about level of compliance and, and how much the, you know, since essentially a pushback they want to uh, bring to bear versus these requests from the, from the U.S. government. Yeah, we'll have to see what kind of regulation comes down the pike as well. Corey Clipston, uh, Swan Bitcoin CEO, thanks for your insights today.